on the coddle. And we're underway here in round number nine. Anderson with a Blink Moth Nexus in hand. He'll draw a card. Now it's an Ink Moth Nexus, so he's got both sides covered. There's the Blink Moth. Here might be a spring leaf drum. It will be. And it'll pass the turn back. It's a new school spring leaf drum. And Goddard just wants to make sure he knows what it does. And he does. So now we head back Mark's way. One swept teeth to draw. Looks like Goddard here on a mulligan to six. Big draw there, finding a land there. Land yep. number two can go get a Sacred Foundry or a Plains if he's feeling it. Grow the Nicotle all the way up. He will sacrifice that. Also Temple Garden option. Just gonna search for that one. So Nicotle is a 3-3. And we'll see what Gaudette's going to do this turn outside of attacking, of course. That part's easy. Let's have a Lightning Bolt. Noble Hierarch in hand, too. Very solid hand here. Cast the Hierarch, leave up Bolt. That's where we'll start. Now here comes the Nakata for four points of damage. Anderson down to 16. Very solid opening. Yeah. Smiter also, if he misses a land drop next turn. Has collected company if he hits his land. Yep. So this is a good start here for Goddard, even though he did take a mulligan. One of the better mulligans to six he can ask for here. Anderson picked up another copy of Blink Moth Nexus. Has a copy of Signal Pest in hand. There's Ink Moth Nexus. And now there is the Signal Pest. Let's not use the Springleaf Drum. Play a copy of Hangerback Walker. It'll come in with just one counter. And I'll be interested to see how Chris opts to use this card. And if I'm Gaudet here, I'm just bolting this. Good I know you, you, Well, the, the thing is that Gaudet's mana is tied up for a while now. And that's exactly what he's going to do. If he makes land drops or misses land drops in either scenario, he's got a lot to tap out for. So I don't want to just waste the mana here uh, when his hand is demanding a lot of mana. Here's an attack for four. There is a windswept teeth. Now collect the companies online. So I don't know right now if Anderson has any of his power cards. I think he's without Ravager and appears to be without Plating as well. And Affinity is a very beatable deck in the absence of those cards. Yeah, and no, we're, doesn't have the payoffs right now. Yep. And with Collective Company about to happen here for Mark Audette, you can imagine two more creatures and an even faster clock coming. Potentially a lethal one. There's Blink Moth Nexus. There's a Vault Scourge. Anderson down to 10. Anderson's hand's actually quite poor right now, too. Yeah, it just looks, just lands left over in Anderson's hand. Looks like there's a little bit of attacking to be done. Signal passing the Thopter token. Goddard's going to sacrifice that windswept teeth. We'll see what Landmark wants to search up. Again, collect a company in hand, among other options. Looks like he's going to get a basic forest. I believe that Goddard has scavenging ooze, which is a reason to get as much green mana as possible. So we'll see Collective Company be spun here. 
got out, we'll get to take a look at the top six cards and see if you can find two creatures that cost three or less to put on the battlefield. This whole entire deck, of course, is built with the card in mind. So it would be shocking if he did not hit. Not many flyers to hit here in this situation or anything with reach to block the signal pest. Yeah, it looks like Mark did not get a whole lot here. Yeah, just a voice resurgence. It's actually a really bad collective company. Can't be too thrilled with how that went. I mean, it's better than nothing, I suppose. Yep. With like a company there into path for lands and voice. Yeah. So not quite what you're looking for. So two damage dealt. But leftovers in hand are still pretty good. It's got news, got the smiter, take a draw step, picked up a pride mage. Pride mage is a great draw. Yep. Time for beatdowns, apparently. Pretty safe attack here. The coddle and voice will come in. <laughs> Looks like Inkmoth Nexus will get fired up. Anderson has interest in blocking with that to maybe slow things down a little bit here. And now. Blink Moth Nexus will target that. See, so that appears to be a little unfamiliar with the interactions from Affinity. Yep. So, Voice will deal two points of damage, and now two Infect counters will be placed on the Wild Nakatl. The follow up is Kosali Pride Mage. Certainly a good one to have right now. Nice safety net. Though I think from a mana efficiency standpoint, Gaudette might be better off casting the Smiter this turn. I suppose if Anderson were to draw and cast Cranial Plating, that taking that hit from the Vault Scourge would be too much. But uh, Gaudette is not being particularly efficient with his mana right now. This is all different if Gaudette plans on using the Pride Mage no matter what. Sure. If, he, if he's just using it for a three mana shatter this turn, uh, this is a fine line. Anderson's Ink Moth Nexus was a land for the turn. He's got a Glimmer Void in hand and a Galvanic Blast. But as we mentioned, he has just not drawn any payoffs yet. Mm -hmm. And most of the payoffs are going to be artifacts. So Quasali Prime Mage has got, in theory, the first payoff covered. So, you know, Chris's line here is, is essentially, how do I get as many shots as I can, try to get Mark into burn range, while also not dying on the way back? And it has to involve attacking with Signal Pest and Vault Scourge. That's the most efficient way to accomplish both of these goals. He gains a cushion of life here, so he's less likely to die on the way back. He deals as much damage as possible. Oh, here come the beatdowns. And I think this is a reasonable way to play it. it, it Godet's hand, I, I feel, is kind of forced to use the Pride Mage at this point, mm -hmm. probably on the Vault Scourge. And if he doesn't, this attack is for four. If Chris is able to repeat the same attack next turn, that's another four. And then Galvanic Blast is four, and God is a 12. So I think this is Anderson's best opportunity to try to get lethal over the next two turns while leaving himself enough back to block with where he's not dying on the way back. I think what Chris is doing here, I mean, he's giving himself the best opportunity to draw into burn spells. Because keep in mind, this particular weekend, he is playing four copies of Galvanic Blast and four copies of Shrapnel Blast. Yeah. So if he's able to get this four points of damage, okay, God, it goes down to eight. And then he can fall even lower because the Gal Blast, and then he draws another Blast, and that's it. So Godet's going to use the, the Kosali Pride Mage. 
and I like that play. With the, with the game being as tight as it is damage race-wise, I think it's important for Gaudet to not allow a drain for two to uh, occur there. All right, over. To Gaudet we go. Tarmogoy for the draw. An excellent one, of course, because, well, it's Tarmogoyf. So it's never bad. Allows it to fill out his mana a little bit here as he gets Tarmogoyf plus Ooze. There is the Goyf. Take a look to see how big that thing is. I believe four or five instant land creature artifact. Pretty large. We got our Tarmogoyf guy out there to confirm. Here comes the voice of resurgence. Well, Nakata going to hang back on defense, it appears. Well, uh, Anderson has access to the same block he had last turn, which was put a Nexus in front and pump it. And Nakata doesn't do anything. Yep. And if Chris wants to do that with a voice of resurgence, that's totally fine because Mark then gets an elemental token. And on top of that, it allows uh, Mark to get a exalted tr trigger for his trouble. Yeah, fair enough. There's Galblast going upstairs. Looks as though Gaudet did miss his Voice of Resurgence trigger there. Yep. Chris has the opportunity to draw Shrapnel Blast or Gal Blast and get this done. Yeah, he did, actually. Mm -hmm. Great management here by Anderson. Yeah, I mean, he gave, him the best, he gave himself the best chance to win. And that's all you can really ask for. So he's going to put him down to two. And now he's going to fire up at least one Nexus. Attack here, Battle Cry triggers. And that'll get the job done. So Chris Anderson's going to win game number one here over Mark Audet. Some good use of those burn spells. A timely Galvanic Blast off the top of the deck. And Anderson's going to steal away game number one. And game did not look like he was going to win. Great management there. And you can see part of the strength of Affinity is in those kind of damage races. It's very effective of going wide and chump blocking for a long time. Gave Anderson the breathing room he needed to draw that last burn spell. Sideboard time. We've got Essor and Canist, Dramokas Command, and Katahi Ward Wage. Four Feet the Clans, two Thaya Garden and Thraben, two Choke, two Blood Moon, two Stony Silence. We've got a hater over well, here. Well, two Stony Silence and Kataki's Ward Wage, great for the matchup. I think the copies of Dramokas Command are also acceptable. They're not perfect for this matchup. Two mana is a lot to, to pay to interact with Affinity, but uh, Mark's going to be very effective at, at winning fights because the creature is so much larger. To me, Feet the Clan is not ideal for this matchup, as Affinity is more about you, you need to answer the board. It's not a burn deck where they're not interacting with you, so you need as much removal as possible. That said, with Chris playing a burn-heavy build, uh, Feed the Clan's probably better here than it is in most spots. On the other side, thanks for Anderson. What are his 15? Uh, Gear to par, Aether Grid. Two copies, two Spell Skites. Nature's Claim, three copies of Edge Champion, two Whip Flare, two Ancient Grudge, three Spell Pierce. Great matchup for Edge Champion. Uh, just very effective against creature decks that are on the ground that are trying to block, and you know two and three mana threats perfect for that kind of matchup. I think spell skites are reasonable as well, as Mark's going to have lightning bolts, possibly other bolts he's bringing in, and um, paths that he can redirect on a spell skite. So good options for both players. Solid options for both players. Should be able to improve. We'll see you got that on the play here for game number two, as he's already shuffling up. He's happy with how he's sideboarded, and Anderson going to figure out what he wants to do. You can see the burn spells are still left in Chris's deck. Shrapnel Blast among them. In the meantime, we'll talk about the Season 4 schedule here on the Open Series. We're in Cincy right now, and next weekend, we're going to Worcester. Yeah, we go to Worcester, Milwaukee. After that, we're going to take a week off for the uh, pre-release. Then we head to Indianapolis for the first standard open with the new set. Third and fourth, Atlanta, St. Louis will be Legacy, Modern in Dallas, standard in Philadelphia. After that, we head to Atlanta for a sealed Grand Prix. More information about that event as we get a little bit closer. A standard open in Kansas City, Legacy in New Jersey, standard in Denver. Then the season four Invitational in Las Vegas, Nevada, standard in Modern as the Invitational formats for the two-day $20,000 standard open series event, December 11th through the 13th. And then a week later, the Players' Championship, Roanoke, Virginia, Star City Games headquarters, December 19th and 20th to close out the year. Of course, if you do join any of the main events on our open series, you will get that fantastic play, Matt. The Hoppin' Rabbit Master giving the beatdowns with the carrots and the bombs. Started giving it out last weekend at our Season 3 Invitational. You can get it here. You can get it in Worcester next weekend. Up until December 5th, I believe, is the final time you can get this sweet play match. Yeah, I believe that the 
Open Series event in Denver will be the last one, but this season's going to be running for a long time. You get it free with any entry to a two-day $20,000 Open Series event. It's not for the first X people who register. We don't mail it to you after the fact. You get it on site any of our Open Series events. Getting ready here for game number two between Mark Gaudet and Chris Anderson. We will see if Gaudet's happy enough with his hand as he will be on the play. Anderson able to kind of, at least it feels like he stole that one. Uh, you know, he, he did the affinity thing where if you're trying to race with one and two mana, three mana creatures, you are liable for affinity to just get too much value, chump blocking with nexuses, generating too many thopters, and uh, losing games even with a pretty amassed board. Looks like both players are happy, happy. We are underway here in game number two. Gaudette with a wild and a coddle off the of stomping ground. So down to 18 he goes. Another big element of these games, they are really close. Affinity is taking no damage off of its lands. And Naya, Burr, Naya, Company, Naya, Zoo. It's <laughs> four to six <laughs> points at, at the minimum. Sure. Here's a signal fest off of Darkstone Citadel. Well, Mark is a hater. I don't know if you got a good look at his hand. I have not. There's a Kataki and a Stony Silence. Okay. Multiple good paths here. And given how much, if any, we've seen in the room this weekend, and from talking to players here, this is a good sideboard to have. Our good friend Rob Vaughn has now played against it, I, I think he said five times. Five times. The last five rounds, actually. So players really digging affinity this weekend. Chris Anderson leading the charge for the robots. There's a basic planes off of windswept teeth. So we'll see which one God wants to go with, if it's Kataki or if it's Stony Silence. Stony Silence really is the end boss against Affinity on the early turns. Yep. Although Kataki's not shabby. Oh, it's certainly not bad. And they play well together. It's true. Here is Kataki. Well, there goes Signal Pest. Pay the upkeep on the Darkstale Citadel. Vault Scourge the draw. Anderson's going to need some sort of burn spell to get this thing off the battlefield. Could go with Glimmer Void this turn if he wants to. But he's got to get out from under this. It's been a long time since I've actually seen Kataki against Affinity. Yep. And it's weird because this build of Affinity is different because it has lands that are not artifacts. Previous Affinity decks, you know, they were just dead to a card like Energy Flux or Kataki, but this one is kind of wonky because it's not all artifacts. Yeah, Chris can play a little bit here, but yeah. it's going to be challenging. There's Vault Scourge past the turn back. God, that will draw. Path to Exile, Stony Silence, Night of the Reliquary, Lightning Bolt, Scavenging Goose. That's a hand right now. That's a fast block from Anderson. No interest in having to pay the upkeep on that. He'll gain a life. And more hate. Okay. And, oh, that, yep, that'll do it. <laughs> that'll do it right there. Kentucky with Stony Silence. See you later. Mark God, that's going to win game number two here over Chris Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a great reaction. That's a pretty good face right there for both players, honestly. Mark, I don't want to lose to your deck. Chris, this is what you're going to have to contend with for the next game. Yeah, Chris is just, you know, that's good. You win that one. Let's go to a third one. Yep. I don't have the patience to play this sort of game. Well, these players are going to shuffle up. We're going to get to watch the third game, probably go to our backup match where the Collective Company Slivers deck is at. Uh, though very quickly, we will talk about the Star City Games and newsletter. It is your source for Magic the Gathering news, and it is free to sign up for. Yeah, all the best content from Star City Games, curated by Cedric Phillips over here. You get all the information about the Open Series, including a match of the week, exclusive deck lists and advice from many of the premium columnists, and a free Cardboard Crack Comic Festival. Signing up is free over StarCityGames.com slash newsletter. There's the F word. Free. Just breaking it out whenever you want to. It's just unbelievable. Just breaking it out. 
Chris Anderson, well, he felt the wrath of Kotaki and Stony Silence, but, you know, that's really the only way I think you can beat the guy right now because he has been absolutely killing it on the Open Series over the past, what feels like, four or five months? Yeah, it's been a great run here, and he has a, a large resume at this point, topped off with an Invitational Top 8 in 2015 and 16 Open Series Top 8s with a win. An avid gamer, enjoys Hearthstone, has made legend several times, been playing Magic since the age of four, and his brother, lead singer in the rock band, We Are Forever. I feel like I've known this kid forever. I'm not even kidding. From Indianapolis, someone I've known for a very long time. I think I met, I think I met him before I went to college at Purdue, so that I, might be, a, oh my, it's 2015? Yeah. Yeah, over 10 years now, I think. Mm -hmm. Jeez, oh man. When he was just a teenager now. I know. We all get older, that's how this works. Eh, don't depress me here in the booth. Come on now. We got older, but we're still young, okay? Love, love to see Kotaki dust it off. You're an extreme hater. Yep. Do you, like, do you like being hit with chill, Patrick? Is that fun for you? Affinity is a scourge in Magic's <laughs> history that's a lot different than mono red decks, especially in formats where chill has been available. See if Chris is happy with his opening hand. Looks like he is. God, that is not. He's gonna mulligan maybe for some hate cards. He love it. Yeah. I don't have Stony Silence. Let's send it back. No Kataki. Send it back. Yeah. You're allowed to mulligan. Especially on the draw against Affinity, you just can't keep hands where your first play is a turn to Tarmogoyf. Not gonna cut it. No, that's that's garbage. That's not gonna do it in this match. Especially with Godet having some really high upside cards to go find. Yeah. You're gonna have to do a lot better than that. That kind of hand is that you get that out of here. That's not gonna do anything. All right, Chris with that smile, hoping he doesn't have to play against a hate yeah, card. Yeah, he knows. He knows there's some haymakers hanging out in Godad's deck. It's truly the worst feeling too when you're your your affinity. You know your opponent's got grudges or stony silences or whatever. And but you know what? That this deck is still good and can overcome that stuff. And also your opponent has to draw it. Here's Arcbound Worker. Now this one, it's reasonable to read. Been a while. Yeah. Back in the old Affinity deck, this was a staple. Yeah, if you didn't play when Affinity first came around, then this will be new to you because you're used to seeing Memnite and Ornithopter and that sort of stuff. But for old guys like old guys like us in the booth here, Arcbound Worker, that yeah. was the one drop. It's a construct yep. with modular one. Yeah. What is there to read here? You got 56 cards left to go. Yeah. <laughs> it just goes right in the deck. Was Ink really Buff, uh, the draw. really good alongside Skull Clamp for a number of reasons. Yeah, why don't you explain that? Well, you see, you, you draw two, they're probably going to be cheap creatures, and then you get to move the modular counter onto something else. Okay. This came up. Oh, that. This interaction came up a lot. That mattered. Yeah. That mattered. Oh, okay. So what you're saying is I don't, they probably shouldn't have unbanned this. You see this with this weird artwork. It's because it's from sort of from the vault busted type of ancillary product. <laughs> this was just an uncommon in Darksteel. This was just a card you could get in draft pretty easily. And if you pass it in draft, you got made fun of. Skull Clamp versus Fireball was a debated pick. <laughs> not for my team. If you were red. Not, not for my team. It wasn't even close. Here's a windswept deep. Have you ever activated a Skull Clamp before? Yes, I have. Okay. I would have also taken Skull Clamp. I'm saying it was debated at the time. All right. The worst is when you had Skull Clamp in the same pack as Lean and Bola. Oh, come on. You, gotta let the, you, you have to let of, the Bola go. You were one of the Lean and Bola extremists. You have to let the Bola go. You were one of those. This is where our age gap comes in. Yeah. All the kids. That was the, the pick the kids loved. Great card. Godet opted not to block last turn, so he took a pretty big punch in the face. He's down to 13. Oh, Jeroka's command might be, eh, it's just probably okay. It's at the ready here, but if you're Chris, you're pretty happy. You don't have to worry about Stony Silence or Kotaki. So we're gonna fight. Uh, yeah, so he's going to lose in the coddle. Yeah, that's what I thought. I just want to make sure. Yep. Should have attacked first. Get the or, points of damage or in. Or blocked last turn. Yeah. I don't love that usage of Mocha's no. command. Although, Chris's hand here is 
it's a little bit on the soft side. It's slow, at least. A lot of copies of cranial plating backed up by these lands. Yeah, Chris has got to figure out how he, how he wants to manage things here to get the infect damage in now, because normal damage looks to be off the table. Yeah, I, I think the play that I like here from Chris is activate the Nexus and attack, now cast Plating Post Combat. Now your Opal's good to go forever. You got three artifacts in play, mm -hmm. and now it's very easy to equip. Might be lethal next turn. Yeah, Godet. With infect. Godet has drawn a Kasali Pride Mage, which it's a good draw. But it, it's not a long-term solution as Chris has two copies of the Nexus right now. So. Looking like just a matter of time. Unless Godet strings together a lot of removal spells in a row or stony silence. Because honestly, even something like Kataki at this stage is something Chris can work around. Oh, yeah. That's, like, that's what I was saying last game. Like, Kataki was great last game because of how, Chris draw, how's Chris, how Chris's draw line was. Artifact me. land into creature that's an artifact on turn one. Perfect. Kataki's going to be great. But Affinity looks a lot more like this. Now, here's another relic where uh, I think Mark might just be dead. Well, well yeah, now he's definitely now dead. Now he's definitely dead. Because there's Dark Souls Citadel. So fire this up, equip here, one, equip two, three, four, there, four. attack there. Chris Anderson doesn't like losing, so he's not going to do that. And now... You got gut shot? You better have gut shot. That's nope. going to do it. Chris Anderson wins this match over Mark Godet. Two games to one. He's on top of the standings after day number one. Seriously, he, he is hot. Don't touch him. And what I, I, I like so much about Chris's list is the addition of Hangerback Walker, just giving him more substantial affinity draws. You see so many times where this deck is just, all, all this deck is, is Ravager plating, and the rest of it is nonsense. Yep. And Hanger Back Walker gives him another substantial card to draw. On top of that, it's something that slows the game down, which gives you more opportunities to draw to Ravager or plating. So it just fits in very naturally to what the deck is doing, and uh, it's a big step forward. Well, congratulations to Chris Anderson. This has been an